All right, Steve, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Welcome, guys, to, uh, I guess, the uh, third official session of uh, the 2024 VCS. Uh, today we have uh, Steve King. He's going to introduce us to some, some models. Uh, and they're useful for more than just HD props. So with that, Steve, the floor is yours. Okay. Hi. Um, so I guess what I'm supposed to do. Um, so I'm, I started with X lights in 2018. I'd retired from um, doing education data management in 2016 and was looking around for something to keep me from being too bored. Uh, and fortunately, I found something that also sucks all my money away, but that's how it goes. Um, they, they asked us to say something that's not common. I'm the first, I, I'm pretty sure this is true, that I was the first Wyoming state government employee with an email address on my business card. Um, so I've been around for a while doing stuff. Um, so we're probably all familiar or maybe familiar with the use of submodels and high density props. Um, you can get a, so I've got this geo wreath um, that's in my Christmas display now, and it came with a bunch of options that all came predefined and you can sequence those independently. But when I was starting and I was just doing a house outline, basically, um, I found that there were lots of uses for submodels here as well, and you're not going to get those from the vendor. So the things I'm talking about is where and how to uh, use submodels effectively in house outlines and in other places. Um, they're they're just a useful tool for doing things. Uh, and let me talk first about my first example or. So let's just, yeah, let's just get some definitions and concepts out of out of the way first. Because the nice thing about submodels is they're going to allow you to kind of dig into what X Lights does under the hood. And when you get a better understanding of what X Lights is doing under the hood, you can do a better job of sequencing and or mapping if you're getting sequences from another vendor. Uh, so first off, buffers. Every single prop, every single prop group, and all the submodels have behind them a buffer or a render buffer. It's a 2D grid representation of a model. Sometimes you'll hear uh, Keith talk about everything is a matrix as far as X-Lights is concerned. Um, and so what happens is that it maps the buffer, and when you render, um, but what comes out of the, what it says in the XLice manual is rendering is the process XLice uses to take effects from the sequencer tab and generate them on the model buffer. Um, I modify that a little bit, that rendering is a process XLite uses to take effects from the sequence, applies them to the buffer, and then it generates the sequence file from the buffer. So how your model sits on the buffer is really important. Submodels are really allowing you to take a section of a model and control it as if it was its own model. Um, so we get to do some things and it's really useful because once you get your head around this, it's a way that you can actually modify the underlying buffer. And so you can lay a, um, an effect and if you keep in mind you're putting it on the buffer, you can actually tweak what the effect is doing. Um, and again, just as a reminder, when we do X lights, we first lay things out. You put all your models on your display and lay them out there. Then we go to the sequencer and you do your sequencing. So you're putting the effects down in the sequencer grid then we render. Most of the time that happens in the background, but you can hander, handle that. The rendering process creates an FSEQ file, which is just the code that's going to tell which lights come on when and do what. And those get passed to something that does the running. X Lights does those top three. The running part, you either need uh, FPP or um, X Schedule or something else to actually run the show. Submodels is a way that we can change how X Lights thinks that a model looks and how it should be rendered. 
And we should be able to see some that in just a second here. So let's take a look at some examples. And I'm gonna exit out of here for a second. If my laptop will respond. Um, come on. Okay. So again, you guys saw my layout that we're gonna work with. Um, so this is my, actually from a couple years ago, my Halloween layout. Uh, Halloween is is basically I did Halloween because it's an excuse to get light, the lights up when the weather's decent. I assume most of you do the same kind of thing. Um, but if I were, oh, come on. Uh, okay. Close this. Let me take my eaves. And so you can see the model preview here. I'm just laying, this is just a simple uh, single strand running on my eaves. Looks fine, not a big deal. Problem is, if you look at the garage section, that eave section in that group is a is almost twice as long as all the others, and it just looks slightly out of place. We've got something that's um, the the bar is twice as long. It it's holding everything up. It's going twice as fast. It just seems weird. What I wanted to do in that case is that I can come into the layout tab, take that Eve, uh, go, this is really running slow. Um, take that Eve, take that Eve, uh, get my submodels and split so that I have a left side and a right side submodel so that here I'm taking the left side and the right side so the part that's lit up naming those in this case I'm just telling it that there's 127 pixels in this line I'm taking 64 to 127 is on the right side and 1 to 63 is on the left side I can take that submodel and now in my Eves group, in my revised Eves group, instead of grabbing the full garage, I'll grab those two sub models in this group. So now instead of having seven segments, I now have eight. And what that means is if I put that same effect, but on that with the split, this looks much cleaner, nicer, does a better job. Is that clear? Yes. Um, that makes sense. Okay, so basically, and that's not, this submodel is not something you're gonna get from a sequence vendor. This is something you need to do on your display um, just with your layout because ven vendors aren't, aren't gonna know that you have this kind of thing. So let me give you another example. And again, one that just worked well for me. Um, if I take all my verticals, and I have a group and it's got all the verticals. And I don't I don't know if you know when you when you lay out a single line effect on um, a prop. Let's take this shop door here. Oops. Move. There we go. So when you, we lay out a single line, there's a green dot and a it's normally a blue dot, but this is a vertical um, that you have to tell X lights. 
Um, and it's not wired this way. It's wired starting down in this bottom corner, up to the top, across the top, and down this other side. But you have to tell X lights, um, you want to lay them when you draw them on here so that the green dots are all the same on, on horizontals, that that's, they're all at the bottom. Because uh, when green when X lights looks at the buffer for one of these lines, and again, I can right click on a line and see the node layout. Whoops. Well, it looks go? like we lost the video. It's not keeping up with the edge, Steve. Um, you just see one of the lines selected, and that's it. Yeah. Um, the the green dot tells X lights which is the left end of the buffer. You can tell it that it's wired backwards when you tell um, X lights. Where is it? The um, This is really running slow, isn't it? Um, that the starting location is a which end? That's this line here. Which end is the starting location for wiring purposes? The green dot is telling X lights modeler which end is the left side. When you put a, uh, like I did here, I've got a garland. The garland is set up to go from right to left. So it's starting um, at the one end and coming down and, and as long. All right. You just click on it. Um, so if you have a single line, as long as you come down here, you're going to have the submodels option. Um, click to edit. And then from here, you're able to, on the left side, just click add. And you're able to either highlight the nodes of what you want for the submodels, or you can go ahead and just type in the ones that you want if in the event that's a, say a circle or, or another different kind of model and not just a single line. Cool, so that answered your question. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the, the questions to see if there's anything else. <clears throat> Yep, and Dennis covered it too. Thanks, Dennis. I think, uh, so this is Michael. I think he was going down the path of the red and, and uh, the green start and end and discussing whether it has to be wired that way or not. I don't know if you wanted to hit that point or if you want to address that. Sure. Uh, we'll see if my... How well my memory is for a lot of this stuff. So hang on, let's get out of this. And and my question specifically, and this is where my memory has failed, is um, what happens if you you know I, I think traditionally you want it to be on the right hand side, especially if it's a column to start. But what happens if you know it's the the, the start the the First pixel's on the left, but you reel everything else that starts on the right. Like that That's my question. I was hoping you would answer that one, if you even got that. Sure. Um, so stepping back, we'll, we'll just cover the basic as far as you want the, the, the green on the left, you want blue on the right. Um, that's going to pretty much allow everything to render as it, as it should. Um, this has nothing to do with how you actually have it wired. So it's not telling you in this case that, hey, this horizontal line I actually have it starting and wired in the green dot um actually in this case it runs all the way from the blue dot over um you can simply change that depending on where you have it wired um well i lied so it does start on the green but that aside you can change the starting location as long as you select your single strand or whatever model and you can say hey it's actually wired where the, the start of that line is in the blue square. So changing it doesn't change how it renders. It just tells x lights how it's wired. 
Does that make sense? Um, and then vertical lines, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, so again, I have it going from left to right, bottom to top. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that's best practice. Yep. Perfect. And was it Michael that was talking or Mike? Yeah, Mikael. Well, yeah, Michael. Yeah, that's correct. No. no, thank you. It's been a while since I've had to deal with that. And I was just, it just hit me that I'm hoping that I've done it right. And I think I have. I have to double check it. But that was a good, he was going into something that I didn't recall. And thank you for clarifying that. Sure. And he hasn't jumped back on yet, so I can't follow his presentation. Um, anybody else have any writing questions? I think it should be readable. Perfect. Dennis, thank you for that. That's pretty good advice. This is probably an elementary question, but, um, and I can't find it and it's probably on um, basic stuff, but I have like mini trees and stars that I'd like to lock together because I move them every year just a little bit. Is there an easy way to do that? Uh, you say that. Um, let's jump over to another one just because I, well, actually, hang on, we can just create that here Why jump. So we have the tree, and then let's go ahead and just throw a star. And you can move them together if you select them. Uh, there's no way to combine them since there's two different models. Um, come on. So if you select one, and just hold on control, you can select the second one. And then now you're actually moving them both together. Um, I There is not a way to lock them as a single model though. That would be creating your own custom model in that case. I think you could you can lock them both though. You've got them both highlighted and when you click, there's a lock up there. You can lock them, but now they're stuck in that position. You can't move them together or anything else. Oh, I thought, okay, I thought he said lock, he wanted to lock them because he moves them a little bit, he, he moves them a little bit and then just wants to lock them, but oh. I could have misunderstood him. Same. <laughs> I, I was wanting to move them together. I mean, my, my display changes a little bit every year, so I just try to overlay on my picture. So yeah, I didn't even think about selecting them together. Once again, elementary question, but I really do appreciate the answer that sure. resolved it for me. Thanks. Yep. And then... I think what just Patrick brought up, if if you do, like I move multiple props and accidentally hit a star when I shouldn't, it is a good idea. If you know it's not moving, if you select one, right click, you can lock it. And now you're not accidentally going to be moving it when you didn't want them to be moved. Um, another one is you can create, yep, Aaron, you just answered it. Appreciate it. Um, you can create any sub model you want on any model. Um, so here I have just a, a basic spinner. If I click into submodels, um, of course I don't have it here. Oops. That's always the case when you do a live demo, right? It's never yeah. the way you think it would be. No. And especially when you're not the one that's supposed to be demoing. <laughs> you just toss that upon them. <laughs> no. So let's let's open up this the Christmas one. It's got I believe a little bit more. So now if I go into submodels for this basic spinner, I have done um, inner rings, uh, outer rings, inside rings. I created a wreath and a bow. So yeah, you can change whatever you want, create whatever effects or visual things you want. You can make crosshairs, whatever you want. So that's, it's nice. And kind of your imagination 
is endless for the possibilities. I made a custom two two sign and was and I created sub models for each letter. Two two sign each number. Yep. I think. Let's see. Anything else that I'm missing here? Yep. Perfect, Dennis. Another another great example. Just splitting up candy canes or splitting up trees. Um, if you if you haven't, and uh, this is not advertisement at all, it's just one guy who does great sub models. The uh, any of the um, showstoppers props, he has sub modeled the heck out of a lot of them. You don't have to own one to download the his um, X model and just kind of look at them to get an idea of man, I didn't know I could do this. Um, one other thing is to do is with snowflakes to do the the flakes or the ends and also the the spokes on them. Um, another way to get some cool effects out of it. The other thing I've done with sub models is use them to cr uh, correct a wiring mistake. Uh, I won't elaborate on uh, how I uh, discovered that, but it's very useful if you wire something the wrong way around. You just create a sub model the right way around and, and sequence on that. Saves your fingers, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I do the same thing. I've got... Uh tombstones for halloween that have matrixes on them so they don't have rip or anything on them so i've submodeled the word rip and other words that are part of different sequences um, let's see states James, I'm going to have to default to anybody else to answer your question as far as that you can assign states to any simple model or submodel. I'm yep. assuming so, but yep. I can't think of an example. Yeah, you can. It would just like, like, say, for example, you had the, a flat tree and a flat star. Um, you could um, assign the star a state of yellow if you just wanted to do the state effect and the, and the tree a state of green. So that would be like a like just your static thing, and then you could still dump effects on top of that. So you can lay a state effect that will always make the star yellow and the tree green. Um, yeah, Jackie is the king of states, but you <laughs> states are like submodels. You define them basically the same way. You tell them the pixels, and then you can assign a color to that state. All right. Yeah, not really on that one because there's no pixels that would allow you to make a bow. That's the problem. Um, I have that. I, there now. I don't remember who it is, and I can give out my copy of that model. There's probably thirty different characters people made over time on that one. And that's that's in response to the the Hattitude Quartet at yeah, bow, correct. correct? Okay, good. Yeah, there's there's a Hattitude Quartet and there's an Hattitude something else. There's another one that's got less density, I guess. But I have two of those, and I love them. Well, let's see if we can other sub models. Um... He was stating that, you know, verticals are great. Um, depending on your layout, you may have just just a whole bunch of matrices um, on this side and not want to, you know, do verticals or go ahead and create verticals on these matrices. Um, and jumping back to, to the previous thing is you can create any submodel that you want. Uh, the possibilities are endless. Um, I don't think I have any on this one. So that's a bad example, of course. Um, yeah uh any other questions please like patrick said i'm absolutely unplanned for this so it's kind of an open forum here now and like we could also do stuff on fpp too uh because i'm on the fpp team so if you have fpp questions i might be able to help you out on that too Let's see what it is. Yep. 
no spokes. He must have had a hard crash. Well, and no so generator if it was a storm. Somebody mentioned that, yeah, that if there was a storm, that the power was, you know, going out in different parts of the country. So because of storms, so he might just be out, out. Will yeah, during, go ahead. I was just going to say during Michael's presentation, he lost power two or three times. I think uh, he's in Missouri. So. Hey, Will, if you want, I can share my uh, some of the stuff I do if you want on, on some of the low pixel or low density models that I have sub modeled out. Uh, Sure, Patrick, can you give him? Uh, he just has to share. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Thank you. So this is this is what I use for Halloween. And like I said, I have a couple of those there. But one of the things I do a lot of is like I have these triple band uh, arches. And I went through and made a, a ton of models. So you have arch one, two, three, but you also have... Um, yeah. You also have, I had diamonds, I created diamonds that can kind of go across the screen. Um, wow. That's zigzagging back and forth. So it kind of does a zigzag pattern across. And then uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, spinners have, you know, counter strike, counter winding or, counterclockwise um, kind of arches. So I did a bunch of those to, to kind of match, simulate that while I've got those running on my, um, on the on the rest of the stuff, if I don't have anything specific for the arches. But that's one of the things I do, and it's a low density prop. It's, you know, this is basic stuff that I've done, watching other people's shows and that kind of thing. Um, it, may, it may be basic, but it does step it up quite a bit right yeah and, and, oh. and like i have a group uh called uh diamonds one or odds and so it does every other odd every other one and i'll flip between the odds and the evens to kind of give it that you know movement kind of design same with the, the counterclockwise and the clockwise um array or rays or whatever you want to call them mm -hmm. so that's one of the things i've done on those uh Hey, David, if you open that back up or just any of the sub model previews real quick, just to answer one question, um, it was how do you move the model around in the sub model area, just like you're doing right there? Oh, so that's easy. All you do is if you're on a Windows, and I don't speak for Mac because I've never used a Mac, uh, you use the middle wheel to hold down the middle wheel button and you can drag it around. Zoom in, zoom out, you just scroll the wheel. Perfect. Mac Mac does the same thing as long as you have a mouse with a wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used the key. Mac since '85. <laughs> and then probably right mouse click in that window and reset would bring it back to center. Yeah. Yeah. Or yep. bring it back to the 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 default. The default. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That answers that. And then, you did you have somebody... something else to show? There was another question about uh, multiple layout previews, uh, but go ahead, David, if you're going to show a couple other things, go about ahead. The Attitude we'll Quartet. Um, yeah, the problem you run into, they've got antler ears, but you were somebody was asking if you could do like a, a bow. There's just not pixelization to allow a bow to happen. That's the problem with, with doing a bow on top of something. So if you look at like a bulb, there's just nowhere for a bulb, uh, a bow to be, or a tree. You're going to find a tree. Um, there's just nothing up here to make a bow with. So and that's the unfortunate part with having some of these. If it was a lot denser prop, because this is not that dense of a prop. If you had a lot more density to it, you could possibly make one. And that's what somebody's done. There, there's a lot of people who've done different faces and stuff. Actually, it looks like that's not the right one. It's an old model. Uh, I might be in my my old show. Um, oops. So you were asking about views. 
Uh, yeah, Justin Brown had a question. Uh, well, actually, he just wanted to ask about multiple layout previews. So I don't know, Justin, if you want to unmute and ask, we can see what we can do. Whatever. Oh, no mic. All right. Um, create a new preview. And there are no models. Try to import, duplicate them. Uh, I don't know. Are you talking about show directory? No. Isn't it just he created a new view? Isn't it just the edit? You go into right click, edit display, display elements, and bring them over. Yeah, yeah, you can you can create a new one. So I have what I call the main new view, which has all of my props in it, and I'll make it the master. But you could also clone that to something else. So if you only if you start it up, you're only going to have, I believe, master view, and you could clone that to be you know, whatever you want it to be. And then one of the recommendations I saw from one of the sequence vendors is to have a a view for each manufacturer or each sequence sequencing company group, whatever you call them, because their order that they have them, their props in may be different. So for instance, I have a display all props at the beginning and not on this one, I have to go to this one. Uh, down at the bottom, I should have I display all props bottom. And the reason that is, is because of the way the rendering happens. The rendering starts at, at the bottom and works its way up and applies all the, the different sequences or the uh, different uh, effects from the bottom up. And so the top is the last, I'm sorry, from the top down, the top is the last, th the first thing applied, the bottom is the last thing applied. So it would show over top of everything else. And that's why some of them have this display at the their a display at the top and the bottom, and they would apply different uh, effects on those two, depending on how they want it to view over the whole show, or the whole yeah you know, the whole display. But I'm not a sequencer; I buy mine. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like it was, if you go into layout, he was talking about that. Uh, jump back over to layout. Uh, the preview drop down. So if you go to your layout tab. Oh, layout. Okay, down here. Yep. That preview drop down, kind of the top right there. Mike, can you hear me? I'm Justin. Hey, Justin. I got a mic hooked up. Uh, so yeah, I've that's never, where I'm... yeah, I've never used the preview, but go. What's your question? I'll see if I can. So, well, so I have sort of a special case where I put like a bounding box around my whole house, but when I'm trying to like move other models inside of it, it constantly tries to select that one. So I thought, can that preview remove that one model out of the view? You can, and I have. So not I can lock this. it, but it tries to keep selecting it. There's a way you can, well, what you could do is like this one here is just, I don't remember what this was here for, but it's a, I haven't started working on my show yet for Halloween. Um, you can lock it and it'll, even if you select it, it won't move it. You know, it won't allow you to move that prop, but uh, there is a way you can't hide it from the out. I don't know the I'm way to hide a, a prop from here, but you can hide a prop so it doesn't render. Sorry, I'm back. Wonderful. Oh. All right, we will, uh, let's get back to the questions here. If you still have these off the wall questions, you know, the Zoom room's always open for support. Um, Steve, welcome back. If you want to, uh, yeah, how long have I been gone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're fine, movie, right? Just woke up. Oh, yeah, we have uh, we have 13 minutes. So if you want to just reshare, you're going through the the left and the rights, the uh, the green and the blues, but I will let you kind of pick no, up where you want to go. And... Back then? Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so First off, tell us what happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay. Um, so the... So the left and the rights is one place that you can do things. Another place that I... Um, Let's see if I can. Um, hey, Steve, I you might wanted to do. Yeah, I'm just. 
what I'm afraid of is it's overpowering this laptop or doing something similar, but whatever. Um, cheer. So I'm not going to present. I'll just get into the mode here. Um, so we can we can split the long line. The other thing that you can do, I've got all these windows and doors, and I didn't have arches, and I wanted to do something with arches. So I took the right side and created a sub model that basically tells X, you know, that that flips the order of the nodes on that side. So it's now backwards. X lights thinks it's going the other way. And then I can combine that right side with the top and the left, and I now have an arch I can put on all my windows and doors um, or treat them as an arch. So I can do all of the arch kinds of things that I get in packet sequences or do myself, but it's now on my windows and doors on my house because I don't have arches in the yard. Um, I've got some, some mini trees and some... Um, matrix matrices in my yard that do the alternate node wiring so that it comes in, you know, a pixel one, then jumps to pixel three and then up to pixel five and skips every odd one going up and then um, all the even nodes coming down. Well, that's fine until you want to do some single line effect or some something else and then they're wired where you can use a sub model to get around that. So basically you go into the sub models and just pick the nodes in the order that you want them. And then you apply it, the effects to the sub model. And then it doesn't matter which, how it's wired, you're doing it the way you want to do it. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to do is I have two kind of mega trees. If you want to, they're, they're not that big They're but they're, they're good size. They're 10 foot. Um, but I have two of them. I have one on the right side of the yard and one on the left side of the yard. And I want the one on the right side of the yard to basically be a mirror of what's on the left side of the yard. But I don't want to have to go, you know, sequence and take all the effects on the right side and then have to go through and figure out how to reverse those on the left side. So I created a mirror submodel. Um, actually, before I did that, I requested X lights to see if we couldn't add a flipping function into the warp effect. I thought that'd be easiest. I didn't sell that, so it didn't happen until I found out the 2024 15 that just came out now has that in it. So I guess I don't need to mirror, but you can have a mirror sub model um, that flips things. In my um, Halloween display, I have my two mega trees up. Again, Halloween is just an excuse to get lights up when the weather's decent. The trees always kind of looked out of place uh, in Halloween. Why are these two Christmas trees up here? Or why are my big fans, you know, over here? But what I did is I created a spider web sub model on top of the big trees. And now when I sequence, I only sequence on that on those sub models and they don't look out of place because they're they they fit in. They're kind of a spider web kind of thing. I still have all of the pixels there for Christmas and I could you do some things on them, but for the most part I just sequence to the um to the spider webs. And then the last one that was um the one that really was just crazy crazy uh i have to do my show without music part-time just to satisfy a neighbor um so i needed something and i wanted for halloween to be able to have just come like some eyes that just kind of come on and off like there's animals in the trees blinking at me and so i created a sub model for the eyes that basically is um, sets of pixels. I don't know if I can run this. I'm going to risk running this just so you can see it because it's kind of cool looking. Um, but basically, I don't know, do you see that? Um, so in order to do that, I essentially had to create a sub model that has 
uh, the the nodes paired uh, had to randomly pick nodes and display them. So basically, this is a hey, Steve, single. Yeah, we just see your PowerPoint. Oh, I'm oh I'm got it. I'm on the wrong screen. Yeah, no worries. How about that? <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, in order to get this, this is actually a single line effect moving from left to right across the the sub buff or I mean the sub models that I've created on those lines. That looks cool. So I I essentially created a sub model that has the lights that I want in kind of a random order. Um, I have two rows so that there's the left light or the, the left eye and the right eye are just across, you know, sitting above each other. There's a lot of just blank space, but there's a hundred nodes in the sub model um, on each one of those sections. Um, and then just um, the deck, because I wanted to have something that looked like this and I couldn't figure out how to do it any other way. So there's a lot of power. Basically what I wanted to say is there's a lot of power in sub models that is something you're not going to get from your vendors because your vendors don't, you know, if you're, if you're trying to buy a sequence from somebody, they're not going to know what props you have to be able to sub model on top of it. But there's a lot of power if you really and get into it. You just have to understand what X lights is doing and how the buffer sitting underneath the, your props is being used. All right, real quick, Steve, we have five minutes left. They had a question that as far as if you could show what you did as far as the sum model goes for these eyes. Um, sure, I can. But please, if you have other things to finish up, just giving you a heads yeah, up. Yeah, no, 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 I, that was pretty much it. The, um, let me see if I can get X lights to move over there. There we go. All right. Different size screens are always fun. Um, so it's in the layout tab. So it's not responding. I assume you guys are still hearing me. Yep, we hear you. We see it not responding too. So we'll give yeah. it just a second. Um, so basically, I, I have um, um, so the in order to get the eyes, I needed to create a, the sub models. Uh, is it going to? No, it's not. Come on. Um, so the, the the buffer in this case is two rows. The uh, the top row is for the left eye. The bottom row is for the right eye. Uh, I created it uh, 100 nodes wide for each of my um, horizontal lines. I did a thing in Excel to just randomly pick the numbers that are in the nodes for a particular prop. So if a, if a prop is, let's say, 40 nodes wide, um, it would it would randomly... Is it going to let me? It's maybe. So that prop I have open has 46 nodes in it. Of course, that window comes up in, on the wrong screen. Okay, so here's my submodel. And so for the eyes, um, I used Excel to just generate this number list. So basically it's 100 nodes wide, but it's it's random sets of, the, of all the eyes. You can see the eyes down here are on the bottom, but in a random order. So it's, there's nothing for a while, and then I'm going to turn on 13 and 15. 
and then nothing for a while. And then I turn on 31 and 33 and then 19 and 21. And then, so again, and each of my horizontals, this is different. But now if I play just a simple single line, um, single strand effect that's just gonna run white from left to right across this, it's going to be blank for a while, and then it's going to turn on these two nodes, 13 and 15. And then it's going to turn on, you know, and then it's going to fade out and turn on 31 and 32. That's how I can get this effect on um, the prop. So it's just really understanding this is what the sitting underneath my, um, that prop when I'm underneath the eyes submodel. Does that make sense? Yep. Very cool, Steve. Very cool. And so when I do it on, on each of those, when I come back into the sequencer and I apply that effect to those nodes, you can get that. Come on. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's the submodel that's not displaying here. I need to take a look at. Anyway, you guys saw it. Yep, that's great. All right, we are at we are at two fifty. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, right. guys. I didn't mean to go away for. Hey, you know what? Things happen. We we managed without you. I'm glad you're able to get back on. And I think <laughs> the uh, everybody agrees. Just seeing those eyes was pretty much worth it. So thanks for your getting on. Um, with that being said. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording. You guys have the schedule. Please feel free to stay if you want to see the next session here. Otherwise, jump onto your other room. And Steve, once again, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah.